We're going to do two things today, like usual. <laughs> um, we're going to take the data that we got off of the site and make sure we've all got the same set of data. And we'll start producing our site plan. And then second, we're going to mess with our stairs and see if we can get those figured out. So first off, let's go through the tech sketch and see how we all got the right numbers and where it all sits. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's about how my life is. <laughs> okay. that's this is not my tech sketch. <laughs> Okay, no comments. <laughs> Lisa, I don't think you need to take that too bad. How many people You're taking Missy's. Oh my gosh, mine like looks horrible. <laughs> okay. Remember Just when we talked about tech sketching back in 131? So I'll get on my soapbox here a little bit. How should a tech sketch supposed to look? How should it, is it supposed to look? What's that? Readable. Readable. Okay, it actually follows the three C's, doesn't it? Yeah. Text sketch. Clear, concise, complete. Keep in mind, who's reading this information? Me. Yeah, you are. Okay. But the thing you got to remember is we took time away from a company to go to a site, right? And then it cost our company money. And so when we go out there, and we gather that site, we need to then take that and bring it back to the office and be able to digitize it. So you're writing to yourself. Now, can you get away with something that's not a working drawing type? Oh, you bet. You bet. We all develop a technical sketching style over time. But the thing you want to make sure of is that you get all of the data and that you will be able to transcribe it when you get back. Take a lot of pictures. In today's world, I mean, this is something we couldn't do really a decade ago unless we carried around a camera and then we had a hard time downloading and then now it's all kind of seamless, right? So I hope you take a lot of pictures because you might forget what one of your notes means and then you look at a picture of it and go. So you're generally doing this. The biggest thing on this is make sure you're complete because a lot of times you'll be working on something and maybe it's up in the Wood River Valley and you're stationed here or Arco or Nevada, okay. Spring Creek and Elko are booming areas. A lot of people from here work down in that area. Okay. Um, how long, how much does it cost your company if you miss a piece of data and have to go back and get it? Okay. If you've got to travel two, three hours. Okay. Quite a bit. So make sure you get complete when you go with them. And take a moment when you're doing them to kind of clean them up, make yourself some notes. I know we kind of, kind of pushed you out of there real quick and stuff. Okay. So yours is kind of pretty tough to read, but it's for <laughs> yourself. Don't take your heart. I'm sure if I put everybody else's in this room up here, it'd probably be similar. Okay. Well, it's the first real production technical sketch we've done this year, and it won't be the last. Okay. So kind of build up on that as we go through. Take your time, make sure that everything is copacetic on them. Okay, so let's start with um, our location of the instrument was here, right? kind of approximately on the line. We had 54 and 3 quarters or 4.56 feet from the instrument down. So first let's kind of correlate that. There's my tripod. Here's the ground. So we know from here we are 4.5 five, six feet. Is that correct? Does everybody have that data? Okay. So we need that. Now, when we take this math and we do it, so we're 4.56 feet. Remember, this thing shoots level, right? So I can use maybe a center line to show this. And now I'm going to come out and hit my Philadelphia rod. And let's see, we've got this corner. Let's kind of write down all of our information. What was this corner? 1.67. Can you say out loud? 1.67. Okay, there it is right there. 1.67. Okay. Then we took a shot on this corner. Looks like it is 
Who's got this one? The very first one, me and Declan. 1.965? 1.9. Oh, around that to yeah. 7. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 1.965. 965. Yeah. 965. Mm -hmm. okay, and then it looks like I see a 1.95. Is that this corner? That is 2.88. Mm -hmm. And 2.88 here. Mm -hmm. okay. and I think, Sean, you were running the rod when we came down into here. It looks like we're at 6.62. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is approximately 100 feet. 9.50. 10.83 on the bottom corner. Um, 10.23. Did we go all the way to this corner here? Approximately, I think we did, didn't we? Yeah. 9.48. It's 80. 9.80. 9 9.80. any corners out there? No. Right, we saw a couple of wood stakes that, that were approximately in the corners. All right, what else did we have on here? Irrigation. Okay, so let's deal with the irrigation up top. We had those two stakes. They were somewhere in, looks like this is one of them. And there would have been one over here somewhere. I'm not sure. Do you guys got your info on those? For it's here and here. Can't you see it here yet? Oh, the <laughs> two slash marks. Oh, the irrigation? Okay. Come on. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so that's an I for irrigation, isn't it? An I? Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. That little box around. <laughs> And those were approximately 10 feet to the center each. From the property line, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we came this way 10 feet, which makes sense, so probably done yep. the same. And then did we go 66 feet off the property to them? No, that seems too far. Might have been. It was, if I remember right, it was. We had no, because the mm -hmm. instrument right here. I have, three, 18, I have 18 feet. That 18 feet, that's why I have 18. Okay, so then we're down 18 feet. Uh, let's not worry about the phone so, transformer, they're just sitting right here. Transformer, phone. Or you can just show those in that corner. Mm -hmm. We did have a driveway. 15 feet up in the transformer. Okay, so this dimension this way was 15 feet. And that's since there was a drive like that. The hidden line represents your culvert. Did we measure the culvert? Did we get the diameter of it? Did we get the length of it? No. No, we got to go back. We get to do it. That's under the Filer Highway District. They make you put a diameter one foot by 20 foot in there at a minimum. And that's what that one is. So this is a 
diameter one foot by 20 foot culvert. And it was three, foot in, three feet in, right? Yes. On the road, yeah. Okay. So is that everything across the top? So we're not going to be down there. We don't need it. So okay. Yeah, I have the and it didn't really run through the lot. Maybe ran through that little yeah. corner right there. Probably followed the highway yeah. around. Mm -hmm. And maybe fed that other subdivision or something. So let's leave that one off. Okay. It's way out of our construction area anyway. We'll be only disturbing this area through here. Did we, let's deal with, did we have something on the burn here to the irrigation? Yeah, but it's under the center. center of the two lots. Okay, so it's in here? It's, yep, it's a little bit more on the lot eight. Okay. And. I see like 120 I, yards, is that it? Or? From there. I have 105 feet. Or I don't know what I have. <laughs> I had 120 yards. That's that 35 yards right here. That's 105. Yeah, I think it was 120 from that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it from two different places. That First corner. measure from there. Yeah. So that's 360 feet. Then we went back and measured from the other side because it was quicker. It was easier. Shorter. 35 yards. From okay, 105 so feet from. Is the this the very cable one? Just. Uh, that's an irrigation. 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 Okay. So that's an I. But all you need to do is show that with a rectangle and an I or an IRR. And what you're when you size that, what it's, you're going to be is you're going to be 360 feet this way and 105 feet that way. Now, if those don't work out perfectly, mm -hmm. don't sweat it. Okay? It's just got to be plus or minus 10, 15 feet. They'll find the box. It's a physical item. It's not going to get them. Yeah. The biggie here, though, was the buried cable one. Because that one lined up with the irrigation box, which fed our transformer. It came right through. Actually, it's that one right there, right? No. It's over here. I drew a line from the very cable. Oh, right there. Okay. Did I get these two backwards? Well, yeah, they're sitting right here. So. No. No. That's you said that's where the pole, the transformer pole, was coming from. Yeah, right, right underneath. It. it came from the transformer right underneath the left irrigation box, which is this one, which is going to sit 10 feet inside, somewhere right about here, right? Left irrigation. Mm -hmm. And then it came down and went right over the top of that 
or underneath that other part. So how far was this off? And what is that down in the corner? It's a pedestal that was buried cable pedestal and it was sitting in the berm right over here that lined up with this transformer on the pole over here. Yeah, I have that box on here. I think that was the 35 steps away from the from the left side of the lot. Okay. Is there a way we can confirm that? Did anybody write down the number there or get it kind of delineated? Can we find that off Google Earth? I think you can probably go to Google Earth and see that pedestal and measure it and confirm it. We've got a pretty neat tool in that, might as well use it. this property I've got 90 feet in. So on that berm, we have a buried cable. 
and that distance is 90. And actually, if I've drawn it wrong, I'm pretty sure that property goes right about the middle of that top of the berm, right on the top. So that goes right there. So it's actually on the property. Yeah. Do you see just a buried cable? Do you see buried cable? And we'll actually probably put electrical because it's going to be an electrical line. Now, when you're drawing this in, so you want to locate this guy 90 feet in from here. Okay. And then what you're going to want to do is draw a line. And we'll kind of come back to this, but it should be P U G. And you want to put that in your line type right there. P-U-G. And we'll go ahead and draw these lines in tomorrow. Today I just wanted to get the house and the topo done. Okay. But I want to make sure we got it. P-U-G stands for power underground. This will have a 15 foot easement with it. So we'll have a hidden line seven and a half feet out from both sides. And we might want to locate, yeah, we better locate that today so we put the house in the right spot. Okay, 15, with that everything. 15 feet total or 15 feet total. each way? Total, seven and a half feet Another from each side. Okay, do we got anything else that I have not listed on here? got to do is we've got to make a decision. Oh, go ahead. You need to know that, that the tripod was 111 feet in from the Yes, we do. So this is 111 feet and it's right on the property line. Mm -hmm. That dimension. Now, you know this land slopes from here to here. And it was kind of, if you think of a topo line, it's going to come this way. Now, let's kind of explain first a topo line. Does anybody, can anybody explain what a topographical line is or what we call a topo line? Cheryl? It's just a line, that, well, they're put, they're elevation lines and the heavier lines are put every, I don't know, 100 feet or something, so they, like they rest on the, the topography of the land, and then they have thinner lines in between, so that you know if something is steep, the lines are close together. If it's not steep, the lines are very far apart. Okay, that, that's a fairly good explanation. In essence, um, what we've got here is we've got two types of maps that we're trying to build with the site plan. Okay, and again, I don't, I'm kind of not even sure I'm really going to grade this as part of your drawing set because we're going to hit this very hot, hot and heavy in the civil section which follows this. But I do want it to get somewhat right. Okay. And in essence, a topographical line is a line representing the Z dimension that is placed in a geographic map. Now when we say a geographic map, that's what this is. That's what a site plan is, right? We are locating this piece of property from a top view. Okay? So we're showing the geography, right? The location of objects. Now when we look at that, that gives me my XY dimension. 
It doesn't give me the Z dimension. So we put the Z dimension on with lines representing elevation. Typically, the height above sea level. Okay. On this one, we're making our own grid. So in essence, what I can do here is what Cheryl talked about. Um, you had it sort of right, but you have two types of topographical lines, so topos. You have a major contour. That's one that we talk about as a major. It is labeled with the elevation. This thing, um, the line weight on it is 0 0.012 inches. And we'll talk more about that later. For now, I want you to use 0 0.012 inches. Okay. Now, this is one out of five lines. The other four lines we call minor contours. Your line weight is always equal to half of your major. And Cheryl, I am going to throw one thing out there. Don't use center lines. Use continuous lines for both of these. Okay. So we use our line weight half of the major. Now, your contour interval is the elevation change from one line to the next. In this map, we're going to be at a one foot contour interval. Because we don't have that much elevation change. So what Cheryl mentioned was if they're close together, it's steep land. If they're further apart, it's flat land. And let me just draw you a quick example. If I have a one foot contour interval, Now, if I then draw my map and I put my contour lines like this, and they generally always kind of pair at the one around them, or I put them like this, okay? What Cheryl hinted at is this land, since this is one foot from here to here, and then one foot from here to here, it's dropping 